Hey guys, so I've been getting a lot of questions since I did my last Star Wars video on who the Supreme Leader may be as far as a connection to the Sith Lord. So I'm going to do a quick history lesson and a bridge version of Dark Side for Dummies and go over the history of the Sith and the line of the Sith Lords and how I think it's important to connect Episode 7 with that Sith Lord. <laughs> Quickly, I want to go over the history of the Sith, a little bit about the Darth title as well, and why I think it's important to connect Episode 7 and the leader, whoever that may be, played by Andy Serkis, that they're calling uh, Supreme Leader Snoke, to connect that leader with the line of the Sith Lords and the history of the Sith and the Sith Lord. So let's start with the Pre-Republic era. At around 100,000 BBY, and again, for you guys who have not read the Expanded Universe stuff, uh, you may not be familiar with the, the dating system in the Star Wars universe, BBY is before the Battle of the Yavin. And everybody should be familiar with the Battle of Yavin. It was when Luke destroyed the first Death Star. BBY is before the Battle of Yavin and ABY is after the Battle of Yavin. So we'll be all dealing with BBY here all the way back to the beginning. And again, it's just going to be some highlights along the way. Um, there's certainly more in-depth stuff. You can study each of these points for days and not get all the information out there. So 100,000 BBY. 100,000 years before the Battle of Yavin was the dawn of the Sith species. Now this was just the Sith species that had many different races, I guess you could say, as far as different clans and tribes. Their home world was the planet Korriban. This species had nothing to do with the Jedi, the Jedi Order. It hadn't even been established yet. It had nothing to do with Sith Lords as we know them, and I'm going to explain that here in a few minutes. So we come all the way to 30,000 BBY. This is when the Rakata invaded Sith space with their hyperspace technology and began a war with the Sith species and they established a, what they called their infinite empire. Now, the Rakata were a very advanced race with advanced technology and they introduced technology that we're familiar with such as lightsabers, holocron technology, warp speed. Oh no, that's Star Trek. I mean, hyperspace. So they continually warred with the Sith with their little infinite empire and around the year 28800 BBY, a king came of age named King Adas and he unified the Sith species. He unified all the Sith nations and species and tribes, etc. to fight against the Rakata. And during this time he did acquire holocron technology, uh, which is very important to pass on knowledge down through the lineage of the Sith. Also during this time is when the Sith relocated to a different planet called Zyost, I believe that's the pronunciation, and made Korriban their tomb world to all their ancient leaders and kings and that type of thing. So then we come into the Old Republic era. This started around the year 25,000 BBY. And this is when the Galactic Republic and the Jedi Order were formed. And the Jedi Order was formed on the ancient planet of Tython, which I hope that in Episode 7 they go back and show Tython because in the Expanding Universe stuff, which I know is no longer canon, Luke establishes the new Jedi Order on Tython. Then we come up to the year about 24,500 BBY, and this was called the First Great Schism. And what happened was that Jedi, who initially trained in both the light side of the Force, also called Ashla, and the dark side of the Force, also called Bogon, these Jedi started to believe that the now established Jedi Order and Jedi Council kind of became narrow-minded and started to outlaw the study of the dark side or the Bogon and they wanted to continue to study all aspects of the Force. So this is kind of the, the starting point of where we see the Jedi Order uh, started to kind of splinter off and to become Jedi, and then well, they labeled themselves as Dark Jedi, those who wanted to continue to study the Bogon or the Dark Side. And this rebellion was led by a Jedi named General Zendor, and he led this rebellion for many, many years to come. So this rebellion lasted thousands and thousands of years, so we jump up all the way to the year 7003 BBY, where these now self-proclaimed Dark Jedi actually signed their Declaration of Independence and declared themselves free of the Jedi Council. And this was called the Second Great Schism. So then only a few years later, in the year 7000 BBY, these Dark Jedi actually started rebelling and that started what was called the Hundred Year Darkness. And then of course, being called the Hundred Year Darkness, a hundred years later in the year 6900 BBY, these Jedi were then exiled into unknown space. And I believe there were 12 total at that point. So this was the point where 
they said, all right, the hell with you guys, you can't study this stuff, we expel you. So these Jedi were then exiled into unknown space and they happened upon the planet Korriban. Ran into the Sith species with the powers they had, being Jedi or Dark Jedi by this point. They became kind of worshipped as God and conquered the Sith species. And they became known as Lords of the Sith or Sith Lord. So that was the first time that the word Sith Lord was used and it only referenced the, the fact that they were the conquerors or the lords of the Sith species. So a lot of people didn't know the actual origin of the word Sith. And then around the year 5000 BBY, there were some famous dark lords of the Sith, such as Nagasato, Mark Aragnos, etc. And this was the first time, at least the first known time, that the title Darth came into play. And I believe that was started by Nagasato. This was also the time of what's called the Great Hyperspace War. So I think that's one of the most common questions of people coming into the Star Wars world, whether they're kids just seeing the movies for the first time, or people get, they get into the expanded universe, is what does Darth mean? Well, there's no definitive answer. Some people think that it's, a, it's simply a contraction of Dark Lord of the Sith, and just kind of shrunk down to the word Darth, but it was just used as a title uh, to proclaim that you were a master of the dark side. The other theories are that actually the Darth title came from Rakata words, and one Rakata word was Darith, which actually means emperor or king, and they believe that they may have just taken that Darith and turned it to Darth in the common tongue or what have you, and used that as the title before their Sith name, because once they became Sith Lords, they, and declaring themselves Darth, whatever, they essentially gave up their real name, whatever their former name was in their former lives, and took the title Darth, so essentially a Darth title and a new surname. Another theory is that it was the Rakata language as well, but there were two words. One Rakata word, Dar, meaning conquest, and another Rakata word, Ta, meaning death. So the theory goes that the word Dar Ta in Rakata means to conquest death, which kind of ties into some of the Sith Lords that we know, like Darth Bane, Darth Plagueis, etc., that were obsessed with living forever and becoming godlike and never having to die. To answer the question is to say there really is no clear answer, but this is about the time that the Darth title started. So then the following years, around 4400 BBY, all the way up to 3000 BBY, many Jedi became Sith Lords because they started kind of getting turned on to the idea that they could be more powerful. So many famous names that you guys that play Star Wars The Old Republic or played some of those older games or read the Expanded Universe books. This will be the time when figures like Exar Kun, Freedom Nod, as well as Eunuch Quell Drama became Sith Lords as well. And then we come up to a couple other famous figures around the year 3961 BBY when two Jedi named Revan and Malak were sent by the Jedi Order to find the Sith Emperor, otherwise known as Lord Vidiate. I believe that's how it's pronounced. But pretty much he was referred to as the Sith Emperor in the Old Republic days. They were sent out to destroy him in the Sith Empire. Well, he was so powerful, because he reigned for literally thousands of years over the Sith Empire, they were turned to the dark side and they were sent back to destroy the Jedi Order. So they came back Darth Revan and Darth Malak. And you can see here, Darth Revan gave a heavy influence on this new Kylo Ren character in Episode 7, obviously by the mask he's wearing. Matter of fact, I think it would be pretty cool if he ended up being the same mask. It doesn't quite look the same, but I think that would be kind of cool if he got a hold of some Sith artifact like Revan's mask in war. That would be really cool to tie that in that way. And then we come up to around the year 2000 BBY, and that's when Jedi Phanus became Darth Ruin. But he started what was called the New Sith because the old Sith Empire had fell again, which had happened many, many times. And this was about the end of the Old Republic days. So then we jump up to about 1000 BBY when Skir Khan founded the Brotherhood of Darkness, kind of out of the remnants of the new Sith created by Darth Ruin. And his thoughts were that instead of having all these guys run around with dark titles, he thought that influenced people into fighting each other, so he made everybody equal and they didn't take the dark title. He rejected the dark title and made everybody basically just dark lords and called them the Brotherhood of Darkness. And so that just spread more infighting. And he had one brother that came out of Corbin's Academy. He didn't quite agree with Khan's philosophy and his name was Bane. Now he had no love for the Jedi by any means, but he also had no love for Khan 
and he took it as weakness that he had discarded the Darth title and had all these thousands of people running around because he believed that it diluted the power of the dark side. During the seventh battle of Rusan, he basically tricked Khan into using what was called the Thought Bomb, and a Thought Bomb was essentially a weapon that would kill instantly any Force-sensitive person, whether they were light side, dark side, or didn't even know they were Force-sensitive, by draining their life force. And he ended up destroying the entire Brotherhood of Darkness, as well as the Jedi there on Rusan, and Bane was the only surviving Sith. And he, in fact, of course, is the one who created the Rule of Two. So let's quickly go through this line of the Sith Lords from Darth Bane. His idea was that you have two Sith Lords at any given time, one Master and one Apprentice, one to embody the power and one to crave the power. His philosophy was to fully train his apprentice, knowing that one day they're going to try and kill him, and that was the goal, because if they were able to kill him, they deserved the title of Master Sith or Sith Master, and if they couldn't, then they didn't deserve it and they were weak and therefore he'd find a new apprentice and start the process all over. But he believed that you were more powerful with the dark side to only run it through two people or two beings, I should say, at any given time versus it kind of diluting the power over thousands and thousands of Sith. And I won't go through the histories and stuff of each of these. I'm just going to kind of run through them really quickly. His apprentice was a human female called Darth Xana. And when Xana went to kill Bane, he had already recruited another dark side adept, kind of a, a huntress this lady was, and she became Darth Cogna. So once Bane was killed by Xana, Darth Cognis became the apprentice of Darth Xana. Then Cognis took on an apprentice called Darth Millennial. Now, Darth Millennial didn't quite work out because he didn't really follow the philosophy of the Rule of Two. He didn't believe in that. She kind of kicked him out of the order. He went off and started his own little Sith cult on the side somewhere. So after Millennial, there was an unknown male humanoid because there, there's a few in here that there's no pictures available. Not a lot known about who they are. Uh, just that they were in the line of succession. After the male humanoid master, there was a male Devorian. I believe it's Devorian. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. This male Devorian then took on Darth Vectivus, and Vectivus then took on his apprentice, Darth Gravid. And Darth Gravid, there's no known artwork or anything of him, but we do know that he was a human male. And then Darth Gravid took on Darth Geen as his apprentice, and she was, again, no picture of her. All it's known is she was a female Twi'lek. And then Geen took on an apprentice, which is unknown, and we just refer to that as Gein's apprentice. But this apprentice took on Darth Ramage, or perhaps Ramage. And again, no picture available of this character, but we do know that he was male. And then Ramage took on an apprentice, which we don't know um, anything about other than being Twi'lek. But this Twi'lek took on an apprentice that kind of gets into more familiar territory for you expanded universe readers, and that was Darth Tenebris. Now, Darth Tenebris actually took on two apprentices, Darth Plagueis, as well as Darth Venomous. Now, Plagueis and Venomous didn't know about each other until after Plagueis had actually killed his master, Darth Tenebris, and then Plagueis confronted Venomous for the rights to be the Sith Master and did actually defeat him, but he kept him alive for his experimentation. Then, of course, Darth Plagueis finds a young noble on Naboo named Palpatine, and he becomes Darth Sidious, his apprentice. So then, of course, Sidious finds Darth Maul, given Darth Maul as a child, a Zabrik child, on the planet of Dathomir, where he was born from the Night Sisters, and Darth Maul was really not supposed to be his real apprentice. So he did make Plagueis aware that Darth Maul existed because, again, he was violating the Rule of Two. But Plagueis thought this would be okay to kind of use him as a specialty Sith assassin, so he let him live and let him stay in the fold. Although Darth Maul was never really intended to take over the mantle of Sith Master, Plagueis and Sidious their plan was to kind of end the rule of two and kind of live forever with their experimentation in the dark side and keeping themselves alive or essence transfer or what have you. So that was the grand plan for them to kind of be the last of the Sith because they were going to live forever. So through this grand plan, of course, that we see in the movies, Sidious also finds the former Jedi Count Dooku and he becomes Darth Tyrannus. And Darth Tyrannus, again, was just a ploy. He was never really meant to take over as a Sith Master. But of course, we all know that Sidious had his eye on this young boy, Anakin Skywalker. So, of course, he takes on Anakin as his apprentice, his real apprentice, and names him Darth Vader. So, of course, Vader is actually the end of the line of the Sith Lords. But anyway, I won't get into some of the other side stories where you had video games such as The Force Unleashed, where Darth Vader had a secret apprentice and Starkiller. But the point to all of this, so my point being that with Episode 7 coming, I don't see this Kylo Ren character being a Sith or Dark Jedi or whatever they're going to call him just answering to some fool who stands up and says, hey, I'm the leader now. He's got to be connected to the line of the Sith Lord somehow, in my opinion, to make this thing work. So my question for you guys is, what do you think? Do you think it's important to tie this Supreme Leader Snoke and Kylo Ren in Episode 7 into the line of the Sith Lords and the history of the Sith? Or do you think it's okay for them just to come up with some random character who's just some dark Jedi 
and decided that he was just going to be the leader of this new first order. I don't buy that. I think it's got to be connected some way, shape, or form. And even if they make up a character, since this other stuff is really no longer canon, that would be fine as long as it fits in with at least going back to Darth Bane and the line of the Sith Lords. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, leave me a comment in the section below. Feel free to send some questions. I'll be glad to do a Q&A video as well to get deeper into some of this stuff. Also, if you hadn't seen it, you can click here for my last video on Star Wars uh, Episode 7 on how Darth Plagueis could actually be that villain. And for you Game of Thrones fans, click here for my last uh, Jon Snow video on how I think he will survive and I explain it as Zora High as well. Again, thanks for all the support. Don't forget to like and subscribe and please share. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.